Hello, my name is Mr. Donovan. I'm the Director of Religious Education at the Cathedral of St. Andrew. I'm here to help the second graders read their text for this coming week. We'll be reading Chapter 4 out of your Creamos book. Welcome. Uh, this is Mr. Donovan again. We are on page 47, which is Chapter 4 of our chapter for today, We Celebrate Baptism. So let's go ahead and skip on down to the uh, purple letters. This is our first truth for today under celebrating baptism. At baptism, we become children of God and members of the church. The Lopez family is very happy. They have just welcomed a new baby into their family. The baby's name is Anna. Soon Anna will belong to another family, the Catholic Church. In baptism... Anna will become a child of God and a member of the church. When we were baptized, we became children of God and members of the church. Baptism imprints on our soul a character, a permanent spiritual sign. Thus, we are only baptized once. Okay, we'll continue by turning the page to page 49. It's the top of the page. <clears throat> Everyone in Anna's family is looking forward to bringing the newest member of their family to the parish for baptism. The whole parish will celebrate her baptism. So what I'd like you to do is just pause this video in just a, in a moment. And during this little reflection exercise, write your name in here in the blanks. And then read what you've wrote. Read and the statements that you are making, that you are a child of God, and that you are a member of the church. So pause the video and do that for just a minute. Hello, welcome back. So here we are, our second truth for this week. At baptism, we receive grace, a share in God's life. Water is an important sign of the sacrament of baptism. In the sacrament of baptism, we are placed in water or water is poured over our foreheads. God gives us a new life. We call God's life in us grace. When God made the first man and woman, he let them share in his own life. But they disobeyed God. They sinned and lost their share in God's life. That first sin is called original sin. We are all born with original sin. Through baptism, original sin and all other sins are taken away. Baptism is the sacrament in which we are freed from sin and given grace, a share in God's life. So you'll notice these three words are in red. Those are key words. So we should understand the meaning of the sentence in which they come. And sometimes we might have to look them up in a glossary uh, at the back of the book to, to if we forget what that means. But try to understand how they're used and what they mean. All right, so now what I'd like you to do is do the little reflection exercise at, at the end of this little section, this little icon here. It says, talk about why water is a sign of our baptism. So you're going to pause the video and then find your mom or dad and talk about why water is a sign of baptism. So do that right now. Welcome back. And we're going to turn the page. Now that we're on 51 to the top of the page, our third truth for this week. We celebrate the sacrament of baptism with special words and actions. Read along. So we can read along with me. Father Roman and the parish community greet the family. Father told Anna's parents and godparents that they should help Anna to keep growing in faith. Father traced the sign of the cross on Anna's forehead. Anna's parents and godparents did this also. This action showed that Anna now belonged to Jesus in a special way. Father Ramones uh, read a story about Jesus. Father talked about the story. 
Father blessed the water in the baptismal pool. Father asked Anna's parents and godparents whether they reject sin and believe in God. Father placed Anna in the water of the baptismal pool three times. He said the words of baptism. It was with water and these words that Anna was baptized. And this is how she was baptized. Anna, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Each of us was baptized with water and these same words. What I'd like you to do now is, again, talk with mom or dad on this reflection question. What do you think happened at your baptism? What do you think happened at your baptism? So talk about that with mom or dad for just a few minutes. Pause the video and discuss that. All right, welcome back. We're going to now turn the page from 51 to 53. Now we are at the top of the page. Our last truth for this week is we can show that we are children of God by what we say and do. The following words and actions were also a part of the celebration of Anna's baptism in her parish. You can read along with me. Father Ramon put a white garment on Anna. He said that the white garment showed that Anna was a friend and follower of Jesus. Anna's godmother went to the large Easter candle by the baptismal pool. She lit a smaller candle for Anna from it. Father told Anna's parents and godparents to help keep the light of Christ burning in Anna's life. Father Ramon invited everyone to pray the Our Father together. Father blessed the family and everyone in the church. These same words and actions were part of the celebration of your baptism. So, for our last reflection exercise, what will you do and say to share the light of Christ with others? So, Think about that on your own for a minute and then talk about it with your mom or dad. Pause the video and say, what will you do and say to share the light of Christ with others? So do that now. All right, so even though we've gone through all four of our truths for this week, there's always good little trivia facts here on these little margin boxes. Um, so let's look, look, look at this one as Catholics. It talks about who godmothers and godfathers are. Godmothers and godfathers are very special people. They are chosen by the parents of the child being baptized. They have a special role in this sacrament. They agree to help the parents teach the child about their Catholic faith. The godparents help the child to live as a friend of Jesus. They help the child to love God and others. So, Maybe you can ask your mom or dad who your godparents are if you don't already know who they are and, and realize that you can talk to these people about who Jesus is, who God the Father is, the Holy Spirit. Talk about the excitement that you may have as you get ready to make your first communion. Um, you know, there's another group of people that you can talk about your faith with uh, in addition to your parents, your godmother and your godfather. All right, uh, let's keep on going. One last thing. Um, your homework to, to do and turn in. I want you to do both pages 55, the show what you know, the picture this, and the make it happen on page 57. So on, on page 55, finish the crossword puzzle. There are uh, clues for a cross, like God's life in us. These, if you review your keywords, you should find out what those are. You should be able to do that. Um, then picture this, write about what is happening in each photo. So certain things that we talked about in the text this week are happening here. And then finally, you can do it in the book, or if you want a piece of paper and make one for real that you can give to somebody, design a card for someone who has just been baptized. Use words and pictures. Perhaps you know someone that's been baptized in the last month or two, or a, a little niece or nephew. 
um, maybe make them a card and, you know, <laughs> wish them a happy baptism or a congratulations on your baptism and kind of design a card for them. After you've done uh, these two pages, have mom or dad take a picture of it and then send it to um, the second grade catechist email at re at cathedral of St. Andrew.com dot org re at cathedral of St. Andrew dot org. Uh, you've gotten the written uh, directions uh, in your instructions and uh, make sure in the subject line you put your name and your grade uh, on that email so that the right catechist gets it. All right. Until next time. Um, I hope you have a great week and enjoy uh, this beautiful November weather.